Hi, I'm Ray Scott, and welcome to Visual Art Photography. I'm always so happy to be bringing tutorials to you. It's a lot of fun, but today I am super stoked about it because we're going to be talking about a subject that can really, really change your photography and the way it looks. We're going to be doing long exposure photography, and specifically we're going to be looking at long exposure clouds. Now, there are many things that go into long exposures and it's kind of technical so I encourage you to grab your favorite beverage, sit back and relax and let's spend a little bit of time together. But before we get going on that, uh, something that I think is, is worthwhile mentioning. If you're not uh, totally comfortable with shutter speed, aperture and ISO and how they work individually and how they work together, I really suggest that you click on the banner that you see up there right now I have a tutorial on that very subject and that will get you going because when you're doing long exposure photography it really helps if you're comfortable with shutter speed, aperture and ISO. Alright, so long exposure clouds. We're going to be looking at how to set it up, uh, what kind of exposures you're going to be looking for, all of the technical stuff. It's kind of dry information but it's really kind of important and in the long run it's not that difficult. It's a lot of fun, and as I said, it can really make a difference in the way your photography looks. So some things that you're going to need uh, before you get going. One, your camera and lens, of course. A tripod, you really have to have a tripod, unless uh, you're placing your camera on, say, a brick wall or something. But a tripod really, really helps. Good and sturdy. And you're going to need a neutral density filter. Now, you can create very effective long exposure photos using, say, a polarizer and a very small aperture of f16 or f22. And you can get, you can slow your shutter down, or maybe add in a four stop neutral density filter with the polarizer and maybe get five and a half to six stops of light loss. That's good too. But what we're going for today is exposures that go into the minutes. So I'm using a 15 stop leaf filter. Now there are all kinds of neutral density filters from all kinds of companies and I'm certainly not here to sell any one filter over another. That's not the point. You can do really effective long exposure photos with a 10 stop filter. They can work really well. They give you lots of flexibility. I'm using a 15 stopper because quite frankly it gives me even more flexibility and I can adjust different exposures, changing the ISO, the aperture, that sort of thing, which is why I wanted to make sure that you're up to speed with uh, those things. So we'll be doing that. Uh, I'm going to start showing you how to set up the focus on it and what you have to do to change from um, say aperture priority to bulb or manual to bulb, things like that. We're going to go cover a whole bunch of things. So uh, before we get going on that, comments and questions can be addressed down below and you may have a few as this tutorial goes along. Um, and feel free to you know back up and go back and forth a little bit to get comfortable with some of the uh, subject matter. All right, let's get going. All right, so this is where we have to be really patient and <laughs> just take our time to work through this. I'm in front of the building and I have my camera set up on the tripod and I'm using a remote release. All right, there's no filter on the camera because if the filter was on the camera, on the lens, I would not be able to see a thing because these filters are black. I focused on the point there where you see the arrow. That's where I focused. I'm using a 60 millimeter lens so I have an incredible depth of field. I could easily use an aperture of say f5.6 and I'd be fine, but it's at f11. That's just what I was using. That's fine. Now, a couple of things come into play here. I'm shooting up into the sky. It's very bright up there. So I took a test shot and I looked at the back of my camera and the histogram was going to the left. It was a little bit dark, predictably. So I was in aperture priority and I used my exposure compensation and I bumped it up by a stop. I took another picture, this picture, and I liked the exposure. There was nothing that was too dark and there was nothing that was too light. Okay, so it's in focus. I have the exposure reading that I like. So what's the next step? The next step is to take the camera off 
of autofocus because if you leave it on autofocus and then you put your filter on and you hit your shutter button halfway, your focus, you're going to lose your focus because the focus is going to be hunting for a place to focus. It won't know where to because it can't see because it's so dark. So you take your camera off of autofocus and now you change your dial from wherever you were, which is let's say aperture priority or manual, whatever, and you put it on bulb. Okay, so now it's on bulb. You've got your exposure, you've got your focus point. Now you can put the filter on. So you put the filter on and you take your shot. But before you do that, you have to calculate how long you're going to take your shot for. And that's where it gets a little tricky. So first thing I'm gonna show you is the effect of what long exposures can do. And then I'm gonna show you how you get the calculation. So this was taken at one 250th of a second, it's the standard shot. You see the clouds and they're moving. At 10 seconds, it looks like this, which is a little more to my liking, but then I wanted it to be even more dynamic and I set it to four minutes and it looked like that. Now you're wondering, how do you get it to four minutes? How did it happen? Okay, well, here's a, a chart I just made up really quickly. And you can do this a couple of ways. There's the semi-difficult way and there's the really easy way. This is the semi-difficult way. And it's that understanding of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO that's so important that I mentioned off the top of the show. Let's say, as an example, your starting shutter speed is 1 1 125th of a second. Okay? So let's say you're using a 10-stop neutral density filter. So now you count back because every time, every time you come back a stop, you're losing half the light. Okay. So if you're putting a 10 stop neutral density filter and you're beginning reading, your starting reading is one 125th of a second. So you count back 10 stops, a 60th of a second, a 30th, a 15th, and so on until you get down to eight seconds. And that would be your exposure time. You would have your camera set on bulb and you would fire it off and hold your remote down or your app on your phone eight seconds. And that should give you a pretty good exposure, give or take a second or two. All right. Now, in my case, I'm using a 15 stop filter. So I'm going to go beyond that five more stops from eight to 16, 32, 64, 128, 256 seconds. So that's the way of calculating it. And again, that's understanding shutter speed, ISO, and aperture, and how they work together. Now, of course, if you have to change, if you change your aperture from f11 to f8, then it's it's different, uh, or to f5.6 or f16. All of these things are related, and that's another tutorial. All right. Now, an easier way is to use an app that you can easily get on your phone. In my case, because I'm using Leaf Filters, I, I got the Leaf Filter app, but there's all kinds of different apps. They're just calculators to make your life really easy, and they look something like this. So here you have the wheel on the app, and it gives you the shutter speeds and the times. And as an example, if you were using 125th of a second with a 15-stop filter, four minutes would be your exposure. If you went to 1 to 50th, you'd be two minutes. So here's another shot taken at 1 250th of a second. Nice shot, the clouds, pretty blue sky, very, very bright. I'm shooting at 25 millimeters. Uh, the first was shot, by the way, at 16 millimeters. I did all the same thing, got my focus point, got my exposure. While I was in aperture priority, set the camera then to bulb, put the filter on the 15 stop filter, and I got a two minute exposure and it looked like this. Look how it changes. <laughs> Look at the difference. Static, dynamic, just like that. All right. Something else you can do, something else to be aware of, whether you're shooting clouds or anything else, is that when you're using long exposures, and this one will end up being two minutes, not this one, but the next one I show you. But you see the people there on the left-hand side, those four people? Well, when I took the next shot, they were still there. And in fact, they moved and were walking right across, right in front of me. They asked for permission. They were very nice. I said, yeah, sure, don't worry about it. Because I knew they wouldn't show up because when you shoot really long exposures like this and something's moving, you can't see it. So 
They were there somewhere, but you don't see them. So you can get rid of people, traffic, all kinds of things by using really long exposures as long as everything is moving. Um, and look at the clouds. Look at the way that changed. All right? Long exposure photography. Long exposure clouds. Two minutes again. It just gives a different feel to something that is otherwise you know, very normal. And again, two minutes. The gold building, which we visited on another tutorial, an earlier tutorial. But you might have noticed that I turned a lot of my shots into black and white. It's just something that I really enjoy doing. So I think you can see now how you can take something that's relatively static and turn it into something that's a little dynamic. Something that will give a new flavor to your photography. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.